In this video, we have a series of disturbances that are going to be coming across West Texas and the upper Midwest over the next several days, bringing rounds of severe weather, including large hail and damaging winds with a Rex blocking pattern in place as we break down the weather for you over the next seven days. Happy Tuesday out there. How's it going? Welcome back. This is your Tuesday, May the 10th update. So if you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit the like button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at the overall real-time temperatures this morning as you're waking up for your Tuesday. So if you want to follow along, the date is actually above my head there. So yeah, look at the surge of these well above average temperatures and the good chunk of the of the central plains. That's going to be the, the stage yeah, really all week long as these well above average temperatures are really pulling all the way up into the uh, upper Great Lakes with this pretty pretty significant trough that's going to be diving in into the Pacific Northwest with much cooler conditions for them. And then it's been pleasant out here, out here off the East Coast and parts of, of the Southeast. But let's take a look at the overall setup because here's the kind of the breakdown you know, for the week. So we've got this developing ridge that's really gonna be dominating, actually bringing some record high temperatures for a good chunk of the Southern Plains, almost, you know, not, not on a daily basis, but near record highs in a lot, some of these areas down here and to the, 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 you know, the Southern Plains here. But that ridge is gonna be building all the way up into the upper, mid, upper Midwest and bringing all the way up into Canada. At the same time, we've got a pretty significant trough that's gonna be, you know, setting up underneath it with this what they call rex blocking pattern and as it does it's not going to allow this trough to actually pin well further north into the northeast it's actually going to pin well further south and just kind of sit and spin almost all week long and eventually head towards uh, florida it might even actually try to cross over into the gulf of mexico but at the same time we've got yes that pretty significant trough that's going to be highlighting over the, the Pacific Northwest, bringing well below average temperatures anomaly for them, and then some sporadic rain showers and gonna be some snow uh, up, up in the higher elevations where it is in fact cold enough. But today, we do have a pretty significant threat for severe weather. In fact, this is the latest update from the Storm Prediction Center, as we've got a disturbance that's, that's gonna be coming across the Baja of California later on this afternoon. There's a lot of lift to it, and this is a dry line setup, but plus there's that, that little mini disturbance. In fact, they actually increased this to an enhanced risk for severe weather, mainly for large hail today. So this is gonna be a pretty significant threat for big large hail producers out here in the far west Texas. You're talking places in like say Lubbock, down here in the Fork Stockton area, plus a damaging wind threat. It could be some 70, 70 mile per hour wind gust as we get deeper into the afternoon into the early evening hours. But we also have another disturbance that's gonna be coming across Wisconsin today and it could reach as far south as portions of Illinois heading into Michigan as we get into the, again, the later afternoon hours into the evening hours. And then that could be a fairly significant health threat as well over, uh, over parts of uh, Wisconsin here. But tomorrow, yet we have another disturbance that's gonna be coming across. This Rex blocking pattern is gonna be highlighting over much of the Northeast up into Canada. That's gonna keep these disturbances pretty much in the same place. It's not gonna be able to move anywhere anytime soon. So yes, as these disturbances come across with this dry line setup again out here in West Texas, we could have another marginal risk for severe storms in far West Texas, far West of the Oklahoma Panhandle, as well as uh, Kansas here getting into Nebraska, that extends with a much deeper threat or some of that large hail and that damaging winds over portions of South Dakota, especially over Minnesota. And this will be the day on Wednesday, but the most really kind of significant threat as that trough will finally be on the move from the Pacific Northwest and really tapping into that energy for much of the week, kind of be building up. And that's gonna be setting the stage for a, a, an increased enhanced risk and more widespread severe weather setup over a good chunk of Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, especially in the Dakotas and to Minnesota. And this will pinwheel across into portions of Wisconsin again with that dry line set up on the Southern side with that marginal threat into the Texas panhandle. Let's kind of break down this setup over the next uh, couple days and look, take a look at the overall kind of vorticity view. Here's the setup. So we got this dominating ridge over much of the Northeast today. And then we watch these kind of series of disturbances 
pinwheeling across from the Baja, moving across into far west Texas. And as I think we get into, say, that four o'clock time frame, the dry line setup is going to be starting to get active. So I think that's when we could be looking at some supercell thunderstorms starting to break out. You can see this trough out here off the east coast. It really kind of just sit and sits and spins. It just kind of creates some very high, uh, large waves and uh, some higher wind gusts, but really mainly offshore. And it just kind of sits and spins really all kind of almost all week long. So, but here's the setup for as we get into deeper into the afternoon on on uh, Tuesday with that little short wave coming across into Wisconsin. That's going to bring the lift to bring some of those uh, large hail producers. And as we get into your say Wednesday time frame again, it, it settles down. But as we get into the you know kind of the heat of the day, right around you know three four o'clock in the afternoon, we could be looking at some isolated bubbler starting to pop up again in far west Texas again with the that another disturbance is going to be coming across, bringing some of those large hail producers. There's the trough, mainly really offshore, but there's the, the most significant trough that's going to be setting the stage for a, a, a more widespread severe weather threat, you know, as we get into Thursday. So there's your there's your Wednesday setup going across Minnesota and Iowa, parts of Wisconsin, parts of the Dakotas there. And then that more significant trough pulls in on on Thursday. And especially as we get into the evening hours, you can definitely see a lot of lift with that uh, si that situation. And that's going to be the most significant threat for severe weather. I do feel the coming, coming on the day on a Thursday. But really, as we swing through into your Friday time frame, that trough slowly kind of meanders uh, into the portions of the southeast bringing some more instability for them and uh, much, those those cooler conditions finally reach on on shore but not really much rain with this a lot of the instability is well out here into the open waters and as we take you through your friday time frame into your you know parts of saturday you can see that just it just kind of sits and spins almost all week long with that vorticity finally trying to just kind of wind itself down and could have a piece of it actually break off into into the Gulf of Mexico. But that trough will swing it across on the northern branch uh, up here, eventually heading off into your kind of your weekend time frame, finally putting some rain showers across the Ohio Valley and parts of the mid-Atlantic states, getting into parts of the northeast as we finally get into your later Sunday time frames. But let's kind of break down the next uh, the, the setup on the HRRR model for the next really kind of 48 hour time frame. So here's the setup this morning. So let's kind of walk you through and this is the the latest update from the HRRR. It does go out about 48 hours. So this is the most real time update I can bring you. But yes, as we get into about four o'clock, you can see the dry line set up with that disturbance that we talked about off here in the Baja. Finally, it's going to be, you know, you know having that lift associated with it with those higher dew points going to be tapping into uh, going to be looking at some pretty hot large hail producers down here in mexico that'll creep over into places into fort stockton while we have those isolated storms starting to break out into wisconsin about four o'clock time frame so if we move the needle here this really kind of explodes as we get deeper into the evening hours taking advantage of that uh, uh, daytime heating right around seven eight o'clock there's prime time you know severe weather you know, supercells breaking out as far west texas from fork stockton to lubbock all the way in the texas panhandle as we have this little uh, mesoscale convective system that's going to be moving across with this little short wave over portions of wisconsin and those also could be some large hell hell producers for them but yeah i was as we take you through the evening hours i mean as it pushes further west it's going to be as it pushes further east it's actually going to be hitting a, a strong cap over a good chunk of oklahoma and much of texas so this is only going to pinwheel so far maybe as far as far north northwest of say the dallas worth metroplex into say wichita falls maybe say the childers area uh, but that's about it and then and, and then reaching all the way into you know far southern portions of uh, Oklahoma, especially into the Texas Panhandle. But as we get into the evening hours and the overnight hours, that kind of winds down. We could have some more instability coming across in the morning hours through Wisconsin, but those won't be actually 
on the severe side you can see with this trough out here most of the activity is really going to be pleasant over the next couple of days for a good chunk of the east and the mid-atlantic states so definitely enjoy it if, if you live out there but man it's uh with that disturbance that's going to be coming across on wednesday again with the afternoon setup and the dry line setup you know we get into the late evening you know late afternoon early evening hours i'll stop the clock about eight o'clock yeah, there's again more marginal threat for some of those could be on the large hail variety side out here in far west texas into the texas panhandle but yes that other disturbance will be coming across into portions of the dakotas as well as uh, minnesota with that severe threat really all the way up into canada uh so yeah that ridge is going to be dominating for much under underneath as the as all that pool and that that uh, trough will be coming in tapping into that some of that energy and that's where the severe threat is going to be really kind of stuck with this high pressure going to be dominating over much of the east coast it's not going to allow that trough to move at least for the next uh, several days but you can definitely see about 10 o'clock at night on wednesday it's going to be pretty uh, significant threat for severe weather these could be some large hail producers and some damaging winds as this pulls through central wisconsin central uh, minnesota here northern minnesota as well this will all the way up into canada and then we'll pin will across into the overnight hours into uh, portions of wisconsin as we have that another trough going to be coming in bringing more instability for the pacific northwest and bringing some snow up in the uh, upper intermountain west areas up here so it's still cold enough out there that you're going to be seeing some snow showers even in the day as we get into your overnight wednesday into your thursday time frame but this actually takes you all the way out into Thursday morning with these uh, like kind of series of disturbances going to be coming across Montana and to the Dakotas. Again, I don't think these will be on the severe side, but that then later on into the evening hours, that's when the most significant threat will be coming across into portions of Minnesota. So let's take break down the dew points. So this is kind of the the level of moisture of uh you know in in the atmosphere. So whenever you see dew points in the 60s or 70s, that's plenty of moist air that's going to be surging up here from the Gulf of Mexico and you always kind of look to look to the dry line that you know kind of this time of year it's going to be really pleasant and much colder out here with the you know well below average temperatures and very dry conditions uh, unfortunately it's going to be you know critical fire danger out here into parts of colorado into new mexico into arizona with these single digit dew point single digit humidity values out here and there's the warm sector in the good ch good chunk of the country and then it's going to be really pleasant <laughs> it's going to be downright nice and for much of the the the, the northeast and that'll pin well across even across the east coast with all that instability really remaining offshore you just get the cool breeze so yeah take advantage of the next several days if you live up in the northeast it's going to be really nice uh, all the activity is going to be in the midsection of the country into west texas and to the uh, into the upper midwest but it's really not until that you know as we get deeper into that thursday time frame into the friday time frame where that trough really starts to finally be on the move and pulling some of that instability further across into portions of say illinois by the time we get into your your saturday time frame going into your weekend and then that trough will finally move through portions of the mid-atlantic states with much cooler conditions coming back for the uh, for the northeast by then but here's the overall setup on the 500 millibar on the North American view. So you can actually see this ridge of high pressure. Much of the much of the warmer anomalies is going to be taking hold in the midsection of the country, all the way up into the upper Great Lakes, getting all the way up into Canada. It's going to be really pleasant over the next couple of days. There's that trough, that low pressure out here, far out here, well out here in the open waters. And then we have that trough, that kind of that blue area, that instabilities, that's more unsettled conditions and a lot cooler conditions. But you can definitely see as we move the needle here that that trough will be pinwheeling itself back into portions of Florida, bringing some rain showers and eventually possibly heading into portions of the Gulf of Mexico. But before it kind of winds itself down, but there's the trough going to be finally bring on the move as that Rex blocking pattern will finally start to break down. But that actually doesn't break down until really late this week and going into the early next week. So it's going to be fairly nice for the next couple of days for a good chunk of of the northeast but let's let's take down let's let's take a look at the overall surface map on on the latest uh, european model so here's the trough here's the setup for your tuesday so we'll take you back through time and kind of give you an overall snapshot 
of of uh, the, the next seven days for the, for a good chunk of, of, of the U.S. here. So as we walk you through time, you can see most of that instability out here into off the East Coast really doesn't pull in and bring any showers whatsoever until about Friday time frame for for parts of the Southeast and to the uh, uh, into uh, North Carolina and Virginia. But there's the setup on Thursday. So with that dry line setup, that really that trough that's gonna be coming across as we get into your, there's the low pressure system, about a 997 low pressure system will start to develop into the late afternoon hours into Nebraska and really have a lot of energy tapping into it. And then really more widespread threat for severe weather across the Dakotas into portions of uh, Iowa there, into what Minnesota. This will eventually pinwheel across into portions of uh, Wisconsin there. There's the sporadic showers finally reaching into portions of you know the Southeast there and could have some instability, finally moving back into portions of New Orleans on, on Friday. But look at, the, look at the low pressure system pulling all the way back up into Canada as that trough will finally Kind of bring it on be on the move and as it is on the move we'll we'll have some sporadic showers on saturday coming across the portions of the ohio valley but that will eventually head towards uh portions on sunday getting into the mid-atlantic states and eventually heading off until next into your next monday time frame heading off into the northeast with some of the instability not on the severe side but some rain showers coming back into play for them so let's kind of break down the next seven days so here's the overall snapshot on the precipitation through tuesday so this is your through tuesday night so here's that disturbance mainly across into iowa for today into wisconsin will pinwheel across into the evening hours eventually probably heading to bring some some uh, a squall line maybe reaching as far south as the uh you know, chicago area just for sporadic showers up into the northwest there's the dry line set up up here in west west texas with all the instability really, really out here in, into the open waters, it's going to be really nice. There's no precipitation today for a good chunk of the country. You just have these little mini, mini uh, instabilities. So let's kind of walk you through this. And so really a lot of the same places are going to be impacted the, the same, the, the, the same, same areas with much of that trough is going to be hanging off the coast for a really, for t uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, really pleasant. The next couple of days out here in much of the southeast and the northeast with all the instability well north up here into the uh, dakotas into uh, portions of you know minnesota and wisconsin with only the dry line set up in far west texas as the desert southwest will continue to remain dry and actually much of the south and the southeast will actually remain dry but as that trough will finally get close enough it could bring some instability into portions of new orleans and bring some rain showers into the day on a friday but really it's not much right i mean that trough will finally start to creep in off portions of the south off the east coast as we get deeper into the weekend and it's but it's not until as we get you know as we get into your say monday next monday time frame where we have some instability coming back into play so you can see over the next uh, seven days, we've got that set up for today, and it remains dry for a good chunk of the country over the next uh, over the next couple of days. But as with as that trough is finally on the move up into our northern states, we'll finally bring some instability uh, parts of the mid-Atlantic as well as into the northeast. But that won't be until Sunday going into Monday. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.